I know that when you look at the calculation of entropy generation, this looks a bit scary, but you will see by solving an example, you will find that it's quite, quite simple. So the example we'll have to solve is the following. So what do we have? We have methane CH4, gas, so it's in the gas phase, enters a steady flow adiabatic combustion chamber at 25 degrees and one atmosphere, okay? It is burned with 50% excess air that also enters at 25 degrees at one atmosphere. Now, assuming complete combustion and an adiabatic flame temperature or a maximal temperature of 1,789 Kelvin, what we have to determine? We have to determine the entropy generation. So here is the chemical reaction with 100% theoretical air for our CH4, and here is the actual one with our 50% excess air. The other thing that we know, we know that the adiabatic flame temperature is 1,789 Kelvin. What we are looking for, we are looking for entropy generation. So we know now that S generated is simply equal to S of the products minus S of our reactants. So now we can do this for all the products considering their, their number of moles. So this is the summation over all our products of the number of moles of each product cross S small s bar of each product minus the summation over all our reactant of the number of moles of each reactant cross S bar for each reactant, okay? You remember that now, since we are talking about products and reactants, so therefore we are typically, let's say for the products, talking here about a mixture of gases. So therefore the entropy has to be calculated at the partial pressure of CO2, the partial pressure of H2O, the partial pressure of O2, and the partial pressure of N2, and not at the total pressure for us, which is here one atmosphere. So then basically the rest is really like, the next step is just to apply the formulation that we introduced, telling us that if you would like to get the entropy of one component, okay, it's equal to what? It's equal to the number of moles cross SI bar, which is this one, and this one depends on the temperature and its partial pressure PI, okay? This is extremely important. And we wrote an equation that will tell us, okay, like, because we, we will have a difficulty tabulating the entropy of each component, let's say CO2, for different pressures, okay? So depending on its partial pressure, it's doable, but we will end up with like a table that is probably useless Instead of this, actually, what we can do, we can tabulate only at one atmosphere and then correct the entropy that we get at one atmosphere, considering that our, our component is subject to its partial pressure and not the pressure of the mixture. So this will lead to Ni cross. Now, this term here will be Si zero bar, meaning this is our reference entropy at temperature T and P0. And this P0, we said that it's at one atmosphere and you get this from a table, okay? And you will get this from the following table, okay? The same table we use to get, uh, let's say the enthalpy, okay? Our H bar. So minus RU, cross ln yi cross pm. Okay, here I'm dropping the p0 because in our case, p0 is equal to one atmosphere. So this will consider the fact that we are dealing with partial pressure and not uh, we are dealing with the total pressure. After this is just drawing a table like this where we have each substance, we have its number of moles and i, then we have yi that we have to calculate, okay? 
So the mole fraction, for example, here one one kilomoles of CO2 over the summation of all the mole fraction of the number of moles. Then after this, what we have to get, we get this value from a table, and then we just calculate this term, okay? Minus R universal constant. We just calculated Y I, and then we'll multiply it by the pressure of the mixture, which is in our case here, one atmosphere. Then the rest is just we multiply Ni by Si, okay? And at the end, we will end up with, we sum up all this to get S of the product and S of the reactant. We subtract them and this will lead to the value of S generated that we will get for this example, S generated will be equal to 966.02 kilojoules per kilomoles Kelvin. Okay.